Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Monty Taylor. And the line of code that I want to deploy yep. into OpenStack, yep. how does it get there? So we've got a we've got a whole bunch of automation. So we're we've we uh, we've set up a system that allows anybody on the from the internet to, to come and submit code. And it's sort of you know standard in the open source world, but uh, but that's important to us. We've got about two thousand developers who are actively actively coding on on OpenStack any given six months. Um, to make sure that, that that works. So you write a line of code, you, you want to give it to us. Uh, we want to make sure that you're not breaking anything. Um, uh, and we, we want to make sure that you don't have to be special uh, to get that, that line of code in. So you submit it in, into a code review system. Uh, at that point in time, we actually spin up uh, 10, 12 different uh, discrete clouds. We actually, we actually create using clouds. We spin up new machines, install all of OpenStack on those machines with your, with your code in it. And then we test how all of that does, and we report that back into the into the review system. And then humans come by, they code review it, they say, "Oh yeah, no, this is a great idea. We we really like this code." And then they accept it, and then it goes through all of all of those testing systems all over again. This is all completely automated. So we spin up, uh, we land something like ten thousand patches every forty-two days. We spin up thirty or forty clouds per per patch uh, or per revision of a patch. So we're actually creating and destroying like 10 to 20,000 machines in clouds every single day uh, just, just to test your code. So what's the likelihood if I were to submit something, not, not that I would because yep. this is completely not my ballpark, but <laughs> um, if I were to submit something, what's yep. the likelihood of uh, it passing muster and making it into the release? It'd be pretty good. You're going to go through a couple of uh, a couple of revisions on it. Like people were going to say, "Hey, you didn't do this right. We'd prefer if you do this thing over here." Um, but they'll they'll stick with you, and it'll probably take two three weeks or so. Um, I think the mean time to land your first patch is something around two two weeks. But like if you're if you respond to code review and you do that, it will absolutely will absolutely get in. And that's that's been really important to us because with all of these companies that want to be involved, we've got to make sure that we're not disenfranchising people. We've got to make sure that when, you know, Huawei, uh, uh, Chinese telecom company shows up and they want to start getting involved, that all of a sudden the social dynamics of a whole bunch of people from China isn't a blocker, right? The, the, those, those people are enabled to do this and, and that everybody from HP to, you know, to the small little startup companies have the same ability to, to participate in, in, uh, in the project. Now, one of the things that um, off camera that uh, Stephen and I were talking about is the idea that these these clouds that you're spinning up are actually uh, running on machines that are distributed across lots and lots of companies. So this is really yeah. a, a I knew that OpenStack was a collaborative effort, it but is. I didn't realize that it was actually a collaborative effort on that kind of scale as well. Oh yeah, we use so we use uh, we use OpenStack clouds to test OpenStack. So we're we're totally eating our own all of our own dog food, or I suppose we're supposed to say drink your own champagne these days, or maybe we're in Spain, so drink your own cava. Um, but uh, but yeah, we're, we're actually doing. People talk about hybrid cloud. They talk about multi-cloud applications. Our our just our, our dev test system, which is which is huge, spans multiple OpenStack clouds that are that are run by multiple different multiple different companies. HP has a whole bunch of resources in there. We've got cloud resources from other companies, and so we actually we're actually living that promise in production and have been for for several years. So it's not just a pipe dream that one of these days you'll be able to to run your workloads across different vendors' cloud offerings. We we do it every day. So doing that every day. Yeah. Are there any? key things that you've learned that have helped with implementations? It's, it, dude, people talk about a lot about cloud native applications. They talk about you know, designing for, for failure. It turns out when you're creating and destroying 20,000 machines in a day, the numbers are going to tell you that you're going to hit every, every possible problem, no matter how good the cloud is. It's just it's just numbers game. So sometimes your network is going to fail. Sometimes your disks are going to fail. It's just going to happen. So you've got to write your, your applications to understand that. If you think about a, a testing rig where we're spinning up and tearing these down, that actually it's pretty well suited for that. If we lose a machine out of, uh, out of, our, out of our pool, that's fine. We just delete it and we make another one. Um, but writing the automation and making sure that, that that happens and that that can be done, that's sort of the key. And so that's where you get the service stays up the whole time. Um, we don't we don't have problems with service outages. We may lose a machine here or there, but in the aggregate, we're we're getting a we're getting a a, a giant you know a giant throughput of, from everything. And so it's been it's been really useful. It's been really so great. it's highly highly resilient then. Highly resilient, highly resilient. Even though individual pieces of it may or may not you know may or may not go away, but that's the that's the Google and the Facebook lesson that you know the the, the industry has been learning from the, from the last 10, 15 years. The the you know it, if this machine breaks, I'm just going to pick it up and throw it out the window. Um, some of the guys over here with the, the, the nicer servers don't like me saying that, but um, 
So go buy the, go buy their servers. All right. Well, is there anything else you would want people to know about the the process of uh, deploying code? It's um, it, it's really uh, it, it's it's really an open and, and welcoming set of people. There, there's things to learn, uh, you know, with any community. You've got to you've got to learn the social mores. You've got to learn how people interact. But but everybody really wants to be inclusive. They really want to welcome new new folks in. So you know, if you first show up and you're like, hey, I want to you know I want to contribute to this thing, um, there's going to be a learning curve. But there's always a learning curve. But but know that everybody has the best of intentions and everybody actually honestly and actively wants people to, uh, to, to bring their ideas and, and to be a part of the community. So for somebody who wants to get involved, how would they go about doing that? Just, uh, just go to, um, go to openstack.org. Uh, I believe the, there's a wiki page, uh, wiki.openstack.org, uh, how to contribute. Um, and there's a, there's a, a walkthrough page. You, you go, you sign up, you get an account, you grab the code out of, out of Git and send in a patch. It's, it's that simple. All right, well, thanks, Monty. Great, thanks a lot.